All right, so the goal of this video is to derive an equation for time dilation um, for special relativity, and we're gonna do that just using Einstein's postulates. So remember, one of them is that the speed of light is constant um, for all observers, and the other one is that all frames are equally valid. And just, I guess, as a caveat here, this should really be all inertial frames are equally valid, which really means just frames that are moving at a constant speed um, can be considered equal. Um, if you have an accelerating frame, it's different. But for special relativity, we don't really deal with any situations like that. So let's go ahead and come over here to this scenario. What we have is a light clock. Now, a light clock is basically just two mirrors where um, you have a photon or a single particle of light that can bounce between them. Now we have this light clock put on a train or a car or something, and let's assume that that train is moving relative to some other observer. Now, in the train's reference frame, it's actually this other observer who's moving, so I'm going to give that person a speed v to the left. Um, all right, now if we think about what's going on from this other person's frame, Right, they actually see the train car moving. And if they see the train car moving to the right, which is what they're gonna see, right, because they're moving to the left according to this person on the train car, then the light clock is moving to the right, which means that that beam of light which went straight down according to this observer is actually gonna take a sort of sideways path according to this other observer. Now, we know that um, light should travel at a constant speed according to both, right? No matter who is looking at it. That's this first postulate that I wrote down here. But in this person's reference frame, that light is actually going to have to take a longer path because it travels the same vertical distance down, but that light also has to travel sideways according to this observer on the ground because, right, the light clock has actually moved to the right. So the light takes a longer path according to this observer. And since we know that the speed of light should be the same for both, right, the speed of light is basically, we can write it as the distance traveled over the time it takes, the light travels a greater distance in the reference frame of this person on the ground, which means that it has to take longer to go from one mirror to the other according to the observer on the ground when compared to the observer who's on the train. So let's just think about what that means and mathematically what it says about the, the different times observed for the light to go from one mirror to the other according to each observer. Okay, so for this person who's on the train where the light basically takes a straight down path, we can write that they observe the speed of light to be, I'm gonna go ahead and erase this to make some room the speed of light should be equal to the distance traveled by the light over the time it takes to go from here to there. And I'm going to call their time interval that they measure delta t naught. Whereas this other person on the ground who's observing the light clock is moving would write an equation that looks something like this. C is L squared plus delta x squared over and I'm going to call the time interval that they measure for the light particle to go from here to here as delta t. Right? They measure it going a slightly longer distance, where delta x is this horizontal displacement of, I guess, the whole mirror train thing as it's moving to the right according to this observer. Um, okay, so now what we can actually do is we can rewrite the um, delta x in terms of the speed of the two observers relative to each other. So if I want to do that, I can basically just use v equals delta x over delta t, right? Because that observer on the ground will have observed this thing moving to the right a distance delta x in the time interval that it takes the light to go from one to the other. So remember, this person on the train is measuring that the time is delta t naught, and this person on the ground measures that the time between the ticks is delta t. So I can write this as c delta t, maybe I'll just square everything now, 
should be equal to L squared plus delta X squared. And I can say that delta X should equal V delta T. So C delta T, maybe I'll just bracket this thing is equal to L squared, and then delta X squared is V delta T squared. Now I can also rewrite L using this equation I got up here, right? This is basically the speed of light is the distance over the time measured by this guy, right? This is the distance that the light goes according to this guy. This is the time he measures. So I can say, C delta T squared, L is C delta T naught squared. <laughs> now I have a pretty sort of nice kind of concise looking equation, um, but I my goal here, I'm gonna solve for delta T. I wanna try to find delta T as a function of delta T naught. So I'm gonna go ahead and come back up here and solve for delta t, so I would get c delta t squared minus v delta t squared is equal to c delta t naught squared. Now I'm going to pull out the delta t squareds. You get something like this, delta t squared is c squared minus v squared, this equals c delta t naught squared. Now my equations are getting a little crooked looking, that's okay. Um, so delta t squared is equal to c delta t naught squared over c squared minus v squared. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide everything by a c squared on the right side. So the numerator and the denominator. So I have delta t naught squared over 1 minus v squared over c squared. And then if I take the square root, I get delta t is 1 over 1 minus v squared over c squared square rooted times delta t naught. All right, so what this equation basically gives me is if I want to calculate the distance in time between two events according to this observer compared to the distance in time between those two events according to this observer, I now have a function that gives me their relationship dependent on how fast v they're moving relative to each other. And this factor we have here, um, a lot of the time physicists refer to this as gamma because it comes up so often. And so a lot of times this equation is just written like this. Um, and this is going to come up in a lot of situations in special relativity because this is the factor by which time dilation occurs. Um, and this is also going to be important when we talk about length contraction. Um, all right, I think that's about it.